Ladies and gentlemen, they got him. They got Dave Chappelle. It's only a matter of time. But Dave Chappelle's show in Minneapolis last night was canceled amidst transphobic remarks backlash. Legendary venue immortalized in Prince's Purple Rain. Dave Chappelle was going to perform a sold out show at the First Avenue Theater or venue or whatever it's called. Several, I believe around 2,000 seats or, you know, just shy of 2,000. They canceled it. They canceled it because Antifa threatened violence, to put it simply. Now, threatened violence, they called for direct action. They didn't outright say, everybody come and attack Dave Chappelle. No, they do what they do best, but we know about the violence. We know they get violent. I can't believe it. I mean, I can believe it, to be honest. I can believe it, but I just, I want to express my shock that the GOAT, Dave Chappelle, probably one of the best shows you'll ever see, the venue walked away. Why would I ever buy a ticket to a venue when they could just do this? Now, now, another venue who wasn't stupid immediately picked up the show, Far City Theater. But it's still a, a major, major hassle for, uh, for Dave and for the organizers. And I know full well because Antifa threatened to burn down the theater at, event, at an event we had planned in the Philadelphia area. Don't believe me? It's just remarkable that I hear these stories. People are like, they say that you're, you're not telling the truth and stuff. Police in Pittman, Gloucester County, had said they were investigating threats of violence, including one to burn down the Broadway Theater, the original venue. That's right. The Broadway Theater panicked. The owner called. He was like, please, I'm so scared. I'm going to void your contract. Sue me. What are we going to do? Sue the venue for being victimized by Antifa? Yeah, we get it. After threats, and outra- uh, after threats and outrage led NJ Theater to cancel a conference on racism and free speech, uh, racism free speech advocates meet in Philly. I love it. They say the event was billed at ending racism and authoritarianism. Quite literally, that's what it was. We we're like anti-racist libertarians. Well, I guess anti-racist doesn't mean what you think it means anymore. But I'll come back to that story because I want to point this out. If you're wondering why it is a venue would bail on the greatest of all time, Dave Chappelle, that's why. Andy knows, got it. They threatened an uprising or whatever you want to call it. So the venue bailed out. Well, let's read the story. And we'll take a look at exactly what happened and why Dave Chappelle was able to get shut down. But before we do, my friends, head over to TimCast.com. Click the Join Us button and become a member to support our work directly. Not a day goes by, I don't have someone saying that we should sell more ads and we should take other actions to, you know, just monetize the business in ways. And look, look, here's what we need to do. We need to make good content. We need to support censorship resistant systems like Parallel Economy and Rumble. We need people who believe in the content we do, if they like it, to become a member. That, that 10 bucks a month or more, if you choose to, supports the work directly so that we can build an apparatus that opposes what is happening to the likes of Dave Chappelle and what is happening on these big tech platforms. We don't use PayPal anymore. So a lot of people are like, I don't want to sign up because I don't like PayPal. We got rid of that. No more PayPal on the website. If you're a member with PayPal, nothing will change. You will still be a member. And you're, we, actually, I think people might automatically just you know switch to the new system. I'm not sure. But if you want to support censorship resistant platforms, if you oppose what's happening to Dave Chappelle, and I do, we're going to be we're, we're buying comedy specials. Timcast.com. We got two comedy specials in the pipeline. We're working on deals. We are going to do offensive edgy comedy. Cast Castle. It's going to be an exclusive on the website. Full show, 22 minutes per week, like any other sitcom, but we're going to do like 50 episodes per year. Edgy comedy. We're going to be talking about vaccines and Bill Gates and all of that fancy stuff because it's funny. And we're going to make jokes about it. YouTube wants to censor us then we have to find a way to challenge this. This is the best way we can do it. So if you want to support our work, TimCast.com, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. Here's the story. Dave Chappelle may have garnered an Emmy Emmy nomination last week for his controversial The Closer special. That I find laughable, to be honest. But today the comic was booted out out of one of Minneapolis's most storied venues for his often wounding take on the transgender community. Mere hours before the Mark Twain prize winner, was set to step on stage at the Minnesota, Minnesota Metropolis's First a- uh, Avenue. Organizers pulled the plug on the sold-out show, citing a backlash against Chappelle's perceived transphobic remarks. First Avenue management canceled the, his, his protested performance at the venue and moved him to the nearby Varsity Theater. Here's what they had to say. The Dave Chappelle show tonight at First Avenue has been canceled and is moving to the Varsity Theater. To staff, artists, and our community— We hear you and we are sorry. 
We know we must hold ourselves to the highest standards, and we know we let you down. We are not just a black box with people in it, and we understand that First Avenue is not just a room, but meaningful beyond our walls. The First Avenue team and you have worked hard to make our venues the safest space in the country, and we will continue with that mission. We believe in diverse voices and the freedom of artistic expression, but in honoring that, we lost sight of the impact this would have. We know there are some who will not agree with the decision. We are welcome. You are welcome to send feedback. If you are a ticket holder, look for an email with information on your tickets transferring to the show at Varsity Theater. Now, many may immediately come out and be like, it's fine. His show got moved. It still happened. No way, dude. We experienced this. This disrupted it. I'm sure people showed up to First Avenue and went, where's the show? And they were like, it was canceled. Oh, and left. That's the game. It's attrition. No, no, we moved him to Varsity Theater. It's fine. The Varsity Theater soon afterwards took to Twitter to reinforce the shift of venues, saying, attention, Dave Chappelle fans, the show scheduled for tonight's First Avenue has been moved, blah, blah, blah. Your First Avenue tickets will be honored. Reps for Chappelle, who, previously, uh, who was previously set to put, uh, put on two other shows at the Varsity tomorrow and July 22nd, did not respond to a request for comment. Tickets for Chappelle's First Avenue gig were suddenly released on July 18th and were scooped up within minutes for a 1,550 main room capacity facility. For those living under a rock or requiring a cultural anthropology lesson, appreciate the opinion piece in your news reporting. First Avenue is the club featured heavily in Prince's iconic Purple Rain film from 1984. Though First Avenue has never official, uh, officially been declared a historical landmark, as many believe it should be, the venue celebrated its 50th anniversary back in 2020. Over his career, Chappelle has performed at the venue repeatedly. Even though Chappelle's The Closer attracted fierce fallout, and even some Netflix staff firings and resignations over the protests, wow. TV Academy voters still felt fit to give the special an Emmy nomination on July 12th in the Outstanding Variety Special category. I, I don't agree with that. I thought The Closer was good, but Sticks and Stones was great. I don't know if he got an award or nomination for that either. But the closer was very much like, I mean, maybe this is why it does deserve something, because he was pushing back on the outrage and the and the, and the extremism that was heading his way over transphobia or whatever. To get an Emmy, uh, you know, an Emmy nomination for that, I'm kind of like, wow, for two reasons. For one, he doubled down and defended himself from the trans uh, activist community. You'd think the, the, the establishment would recoil in horror at the sight of that. And two... It was mostly just a defense of that. It, it was it was not nearly as funny as it should have been. It was getting really, you know, Carlin-esque end of career era where he just started ragging on the, the machine instead of telling jokes. Not Carlin. I'm a big fan. He's a he was a, he's a legend. But later on, you know, in his career, it was just saying the government sucks. The government sucks. Here's why it sucks. A lot of it was funny and I can respect it. And maybe I don't know. I don't know. The closer was good. Don't get me wrong. You know, I think Dave Chappelle is the greatest of all time. It doesn't literally mean he's the best comic who's ever lived. I mean, like in this generation, he is the top tier cream of the crop. They say in, in his What's, it, What's in a Name special release on Netflix last month, Chappelle showed, showed little understanding of the pain he may have caused. In fact, he called The Closer a masterpiece, really, citing a meeting with upset students of D.C.'s Duke Ellington School of the Arts, where Chappelle himself finished high school. The comic dismissed their concerns with his material and his POV on trans rights as simply talking points lacking insight into his artistic nuance. The more you say I can't say something, the more urgent it is for me to say it, said Chappelle in the 40 minute speech over the naming of the school's theater. And it has nothing to do with what you're saying I can't say. It has everything to do with what my right, my freedom of artistic expression. We got the posts from Mr. Andy No covering the story over on Twitter. He says, breaking militant far left groups in Minneapolis are calling for a violent direct action against Dave Chappelle's show tonight. They led an onslaught against First Avenue and successfully pressured it to cancel. Now the show has moved to the Varsity Theater. Minnesota Uprising says there is no world that should exist where turfs and transphobes feel comfortable oppressing our trans comrades. Show up tonight to let Dave Chappelle, his fans, and First Avenue know their hatred isn't welcome here. 6 p.m. 7th Street and First Avenue, cover your face and stay dangerous. Yeah. Outright calling for violence. Stay dangerous. We know what that means, right? And we can see the First Avenue announced they were moving. Here's another uh, uh, flyer. Trans people aren't going anywhere. Chappelle's show has been moved to the Varsity Theater. Meet at 13th Ave. 
and Southeast 4th at 6 p.m. No date nights for bigots, they say. F. Dania Frank. Dana Frank. It works. It really does. Now, outside of that, there's been an attempt from people in in Minnesota and Minneapolis to just go after Dave Chappelle and get him canceled. Yo, there's a cult, okay? Regular people think Dave Chappelle is funny. Regular people watch Netflix, and that's why Netflix paid him tens of millions of dollars for these comedy specials so they could sell against it. The Star Tribune says Dave Chappelle's superstar status doesn't justify super high prices. Really? Yes, it does. Dave Chappelle is the most famous comedian right now, period. I mean, you got the likes of Joe Rogan. Maybe you could argue Joe Rogan is more famous, but I think Joe Rogan's more famous because of his podcast. I think his podcast plus his comedy and the other thing in MMA, as just a comedian, Dave Chappelle is it. That's why he get paid the big bucks over on Netflix. But I, I don't know. I don't know. It's fascinating. I mean, are we going to see something like this with Joe Rogan? Perhaps. Perhaps. Well, Joe, you got some competition here, baby. Chris Cuomo's coming to do a podcast and a YouTube show, which will see him go rogue with free agent guests. I don't really care to cover this story. I don't care for Chris Cuomo. I just thought it was funny. I'll tell you what. I know exactly about this. And I know exactly about what they're trying to do. And I also point out, look how much weight I have lost. Uh, my weight's bounced up and down, but this time it's going to stick. We got this story from August 31st, 2019. Let's talk about exactly what happens. I can't speak to what Dave Chappelle is thinking right now. I can speak to what I was thinking and what the organizer of our event was thinking when something similar happened. I can give you insights into what may be occurring with Dave Chappelle because it happened to us. Let me show you the story. After threats and outrage led New New Jersey theater to cancel a conference on racism, free speech advocates meet in Philly. I love how the media just absolutely lies or it's not so much they lie. It's that they have no interest in telling the truth because, well, we have to balance the view. Okay, let's break it down. They say more than a week ago, amid threats of violence made purportedly by anti-fascists and criticism among progressive activists, the South Jersey theater canceled a planned event that had been billed as a day long conversation about how to end racism and authoritarianism. Philadelphians, it seemed, may be better accustomed to controversial people saying potentially offensive things. On Saturday, organizers held the conference at Sugar House Casino, and the day of panel discussions proceeded without incident. They try to make it seem like everything was fine, like it was without incident. That's not true. Absolutely not true. We had a far leftist come in and harass people and then claim she got chased out of the building, which never happened, just outright lies. There was incident. Absolutely. Look what they do. Hundreds of people, largely white men. Uh, The majority of people in this country are white. Okay. And there were women there too. Largely white men. Yeah. It was proportional to the country. You see the games they play? And at least one from Bulgaria packed into an event uh, event space at the casino. To hear an assembly of mostly right-leaning YouTube personalities and provocateurs discuss what they describe as the threat posed by big tech censorship of content it deems inappropriate, the folly of banning such things as hate speech and sex work and outrage culture. It's just a false framing because this is the game they play. We're being fair. We're being fair. The event had progressives. We had social justice activists speaking. It was about bringing people together to share these ideas. And many of these people talk about this, but provocateurs, what does that mean? A uh, right-leaning YouTube personalities and provocateurs? It's just such disgusting BS. It was sponsored by the social network Minds, which promotes itself as an alternative to Facebook and Mythinformed, a Milwaukee-based secular organization, blah, 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 blah. P- Police in Pittman, Gloucester County, had said they were investigating threats of violence, including one to burn down the Broadway theater, the original venue. So here's what happens. The activists know for a year we were planning this event, or around a year. They waited until the week before the event called in the threat to burn down the theater. The guy who runs the theater then voided his contract with us, and we could have sued him for damages and probably won. But what's the point? Now, when this happened, we had like a week to find a venue. We called around, and most places were booked. That's the point. That's the tactic used by these far-left terrorists. The goal is to make it impossible. The Broadway theater was 1,000 seats. The Sugar House Casino was 500. Several hundred people were unable to attend because of the capacity limitations. 
We lost a lot of money. Now, they want us to come out. Antifa and the terrorists want us to come out and talk about all the pain and the damage they cause so they can threaten other people and say, see what we'll do to you. And there's no one really to sue because it's a bunch of wingnut activists who have no money. We could go after the theater and we talked about it. It would cost us as much money as, you know, as we could probably earn in damages. It was a lot of damages. It was a lot. And then what? We go after the theater. Some people said we should bury them. You, if they, they, they told us, I'll tell you this too. When we told them there were likely going to be protests, the Broadway theater said, don't worry, we've had Ann Coulter here recently. We can handle it. And I said, okay, perfect. And then they bailed out because apparently someone said they would come and burn the theater to the ground. And the police, I don't think ever arrested anybody. And that's, they get away with it. And it was probably a federal crime too. And that's probably why the police didn't do anything. And the feds aren't going to get involved for interstate threats like that. Too minimal. So nothing ever got done. Now let's talk about Dave Chappelle, the insight. I assure you they were upset. I assure you they're angry. I assure you this is bad for Dave Chappelle's business. Now, Dave, he's the goat, right? So the varsity immediately picked it up and said, don't worry about it. We got you. For us, it was a lot harder. We had to call around. We had to try and find a venue. It was not super easy, but we pulled it off. And then we had to like wait till the last minute. I got to be honest, actually, as much as it does suck that we lost around half our capacity and several hundred people were unable to attend because all of a sudden we had to refund their tickets. It was fun to be in a casino. Our security was way better. We felt more comfortable. We had a really great green room hangout area VIP section. And uh, we got to go play back blackjack downstairs. That was actually pretty cool. I'm like, you know, look, we got some people that are speaking. I'm not, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go downstairs and play some blackjack. I love me some blackjack. So that was, that was a lot of fun. You know, light, uh, open, uh, close the door, open a window, you know, right? But this is the issue. Dave Chappelle, the venue organizers, they know Antifa means business. They know the government won't do anything about it. So they cave instantly. We are living in a terror state right now. Dave Chappelle, who is getting an Emmy for a multi-million dollar Netflix comedy special can't do an event without terrorists threatening violence. Stay dangerous. We know what they'll do. Look what they did to us. How do we live this way? If law enforcement will not handle this, yo, it's gonna collapse. Cities are falling apart. They're riddled with crime. I'm already, I'm already, I'm getting my segment ready for 1 p.m. And it's about just the brawls, the violence, the chaos erupting all over the country. People are just fighting and beating each other and the cops do nothing about it. It's crazy. You think Dave Chappelle wants any of that to happen? So I'll tell you this. Behind the scenes, we were pissed. We called lawyers. We said, what are our options? What do we do? And we could have filed an emergency action to get the venue to play. And then I'm just like, it's tough. It's tough, man. How do you how do you combat this? Our headline speaker was um, with this uh, famous blues musician. We've had him on the show. You guys know what I'm talking about. We were going to talk about ending racism. And they said that having, having this guy come didn't matter. The media smears us as provocateurs and right, right, right-leaning individuals, even though our headliners were legit, proud individuals who have actually de-radicalized white supremacists. It's crazy to me. But this is the world we live in right now. And nothing was ever done about the extremists. They went to the media and they said stuff like they don't live here and they're coming into our town. And I was like, they don't live here. I actually lived in this area a few miles away from the theater. I, I lived a, a few miles away and they claimed that we were coming from the outside community and they literally came from like 40, 50 miles away with lies and they just run with it. Organizers promoted the event to, uh, as an opportunity to engage honestly with others in open dialogue. They say that um, I think cancel culture is getting out of control, says Bill Ottman. During a panel discussion on the future of comedy online, a moderator asked whether he should ever apologize for a joke. No, says Count Dankula, the comedian who made a controversial dog video. If I cared about how you felt, I wouldn't have made the offensive joke. Well, you know, here we go. The headliner was Daryl Davis, a black musician and activist who says he's convinced 200 people to leave the Klan. After Saturday's conference at Sugar House, Police escorted guests to an after party at Human Village Brewing Co. in Pittman, where about 40 people demonstrated outside. 
And when Davis tried to talk to them, they screamed that he was a white supremacist. That's right. A middle aged black man who de-radicalized the Klan. They called him a white supremacist. This is the world we live in. They don't know. They don't care. Andrew Seidman, the journalist who wrote about this, he didn't tell you the truth. He went out there and said, what are they saying? What are you saying? Bro, come to the event, read our documents and report the truth. They don't do it. And the activists know they don't do it and they make a point of it. Activists know the media will play both sides so they can say whatever they want. They'll say, oh, the organizers there are a bunch of white supremacists who have literally attacked people in the streets. And what do they do? They'll say the organizers have been accused of attacking people in the streets. They know the media just reports it uncritically and without evidence. How do you combat such a thing? Look, I don't mean to rehash an old story. I just want to point this out as it pertains to Dave Chappelle, what they may have been going through. And maybe Dave doesn't care. Maybe the varsity was a better venue or whatever. But this they're getting to him. They're they, Dave Chappelle, of all people. Well, we live in a terror state and the police aren't doing anything about it. The DAs won't do anything about it. Maybe it's the George Soros funded DAs, but I don't know. There you go, man. I'll see it. We'll, we'll see how things progress, I suppose. But we've been talking about it for a decade and, and this is where we're at. Hey, man, Dave, you rock. Look forward to hearing more from you. I would go to the venue. I don't care about the threats. You got to stand up for what you believe in, man. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.